Hey learners, Jared here. Now we are going to get pretty crazy today. And by crazy I mean a little chaotic. And by chaotic I mean chaotic motion. And for that we're going to look at a double pendulum. This is episode 5 of APP Physics. We've looked at pendulums before when we analyzed the swinging motion of a pig in Angry Birds. A pendulum's period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Over at Minute Physics Labs, they've created a double pendulum simulator, but really it's as many pendulums as you want. You add vertices, remove vertices, so on and so forth, and you can control their position, velocity, and mass. Now, these pendulums exhibit chaotic motion, meaning that their initial conditions, even if slightly variable, have very different outcomes. This is analogous to the butterfly effect. If you have played golf before, then you have utilized the advantages of a double pendulum. Your arms are one pendulum, and then the club head is the next, as seen in this simulation. Which is probably why golf is so hard, because any minute change in the initial conditions can drastically change the outcome of your swing. So I set about looking into the Minute Physics simulation wanting to know what is gravity, if we made it Earth's gravity, how long is the string, and are there any other effects that are happening inside this pendulum. And here's what I got. I made several different pendulums of different lengths and I tracked their period. I then graphed their period versus the length. And you get this initial graph. And you say, well, that looks pretty straight, but check out that y-intercept. Most of the time, I get the question, should I force it through the origin? Think about what the intercept physically means. If you have no length, you still have a period of motion? No length means you have no pendulum at all, so how can it swing back and forth if it's not on something that has length? This is a graph where we should force it through the origin, but look at that data. It's not linear, it's not as linear as I'd like it to be. Because I only graph period versus length, the relationship is period and the square root of L. So I should either graph T versus the square root of L, or I can graph T squared versus L. Now that does change what my slope ends up being. If I square both sides of the equation, it's T squared equals 4 pi squared times L all over G. If I linearize this equation, in the form y equals mx. m is the slope of my graph, and m is just a number. It is everything that is constant. So group everything that is a constant together, 4 pi squared over g. Doing this and taking the standard default length to just be 1, I got a value for g in the simulation of around 3.25 something per second squared. The unit of length is no unit of length that we have, it's just some default length in this simulator. What I can do though, is scale it so that it resembles our Earth. Doing this and setting up a ratio, you get about triple what it is. In other words, the default length is about 3.01 meters here on Earth. Now something else interesting is happening here. Notice the difference in height from the initial and the final point. If I plotted this out over, say, a long period of time, I get something that looks like this. Each time the pendulum isn't quite reaching the height that it had before. It's gradually losing height over time. In other words, it's losing energy. There is some sort of resistive force acting here, be it friction in the initial vertex, or some sort of air resistance, some force is causing this pendulum to lose energy over time. Because the only way that it can lose energy is if we look at the conservation of energy. K1 plus U1 plus W equals K2 plus U2. Initial and the work done equals final. Well, there's got to be work done for there to be a change in energy from one side to the next. That work can only be done by some outside force. Some force that is not conservative, that is siphoning energy out of the pendulum. Be it heat in the vertice, or heat in the air resistance, something is causing this pendulum to slow down. And we can see this here.
So there you have it. Something that is very simple can also lead to something very chaotic with just a very small change. I hope you learned something. Please, if you have anything that you would like to see analyzed, leave it in the comments below. And as always, keep learning. Now, something else interesting is happening with this pendulum. Notice the difference in height. Ah. <laughs> Spit it out. <laughs> Ugh.